Wow, there are too many people playing Nyad right now. Wait, am I part of the problem? Nyad has been out for two weeks now. One week if you count the week that she's been released to the most of the public, because before that you couldn't get her unless you were lucky enough to get her S tier in the essence. Since then, chaos has ensued and everybody's playing Nyad. My original estimates of two thirds of the matches being against Nyad has now changed to almost 100% of the matches now are now against the Nyad. It's crazy. We can really see that she is very popular. I took it upon myself to play her every day for 7 days. This is so that I could see what I could learn about Nyad and compile a list of tips that might be able to help you if you want to pick her up for the first time or if you want to improve at her already and you don't know where to improve. So let's begin. At the beginning of the match there are some things that you should do. First, at the beginning of the match you should definitely throw your harpoon as soon as you spawn into the map or at least a couple of seconds into it. This will put you into your torrent form that increases your base speed movement by a lot. By doing this, you can quickly find a survivor without having to take too long to be able to find them. The faster that you find them, the faster that you can get them down, technically. This is very important because Nyad is really weak to Cypher Rush since her abilities really aren't very fast damage. For her to be able to do damage with her abilities, she needs survivors to slowly increment their moisture and then get hit. But for example, for people like Violinist, their damage is flat damage that happens as soon as they hit their target. For this reason, she needs more time to take a survivor down and then this means that she's very weak to Cypher Rush because this gives more time to survivors to be able to finish Cyphers. When finding a survivor at the beginning of a match, it's very important to not try and use your water abilities to get them down. You should really focus on using your weapon because it is very difficult to get their moisture up very quickly without much presence. Without her dash ability for example, or her increased instant moisture that she deals when she recalls her spear back again. Using your harpoon for movement and then the harpoon to be able to attack is more important than the moisture at, at least at the beginning of the match. Now that you are officially chasing a survivor, it is very important to prioritize your weapon attacks over your water damage. This is in general, not just at the beginning of the match as well. There are a couple of reasons for this. The first reason is that your attack recovery is very fast compared to some other hunters. This means that you can quickly hit a survivor and quickly get back into the chase again. Or if you miss them, the attack recovery is also very short, so you can try again and try again and try again. The second is that it takes much longer to be able to get moisture onto a survivor, and to do so usually you need to travel away from the survivor and not towards them. This can give the survivor a chance to transition away or to do something else that will make it more difficult for you to get them. By trying to get closer to them you guarantee more hits, at least a little bit faster, and there is less chance that they will get away from you or hide from you. The only time that you really should prioritize water damage is if there's the last cypher has been primed and you know that they've primed it and they're waiting for a survivor to get hit. You're chasing a survivor and you don't want to hit them because you know they will just quickly run away, so in this case you might want to use your water or try and prioritize your water damage. This means that when they get hit by the water damage, you can quickly hit them as soon as they stand back up again when borrowed time activates. Now that you have some presence, you really want to start balancing your water damage with your normal attack. You also want to start pressuring survivors in certain areas and stopping them from looping certain areas that could be a pain for you. The easiest way to guarantee some water damage is to make a very big abyss area and it's even more important to do this in certain zones or areas of the map where the survivor has around 2-3 to three exits. By doing this, you're forcing the survivor to pick one of the exits that you can then control and they don't have that many options of being able to step out of the water. One of the best examples of this is using Shack. By quickly closing off the different Shacks in the different maps in Identity 5, you can force them into deciding to either go out of one of the two doors or the window. By you blocking one of the doors and also covering the window, they are forced to go in one direction. And the longer they take to decide, the more moisture they accumulate, probably forcing them to get at least one hit from the moisture or by you. Possibly even two. But in general, it's very difficult to get some water damage, at least straight off the bat. So it's better to try and use your water areas or your abyss areas to be able to pressure survivors from staying in the same area for too long and maybe even forcing them out into the open where they have to decide where to transition to. This can mean that you, you can maybe inflict some more damage with the dash or maybe you could just hit them with your weapon that you should be doing in the first place. You need to be very careful when trying to create abyss area zones though because it can be very tempting to be able to see a survivor going into a certain area so you quickly 
quickly go off and try and circle that area so that they will take water damage, only to find that they have disappeared and gone and you don't know where they've gone. Or they transition to a very, very far away to a better kiting area. This happened to me at the beginning when I first started playing it. I wanted to close off the area to find out that they had just already moved and me closing off the area did nothing because they weren't there anymore. In most cases you want to stay close to the survivor and you don't want to lose them from sight. In some cases you can try to close off areas but in most cases you only want to seal off different types of kiting areas if you know that you can do it quickly and efficiently without losing sight of the survivor. To be able to chase them normally, it might be a good idea for you to be able to use your harpoon just to give you the torrent speed boost. By using the torrent speed boost, you can quickly catch up to a survivor who transitioned and you don't really need to use it for anything else or to close areas, for example. You can use it just to be able to keep up or to get ahead of the survivor. You finally captured a survivor and you put them on the chair, but now you're trying to decide how should I camp? Well, it is very tempting, and a lot of people do this, is to try and cover the floor in water around the chair. But this is not very effective and does waste a lot of time, and it can be also very pointless. The more time you spend defending a chair right next to it trying to cover the place in water, the more the survivor team is decoding. So what you really want to be doing is to quickly circle the area with water so that there is a little bit of moisture if a survivor comes to rescue. And then you want to go and find either the rescuer that's coming in to go and rescue, or you want to go and pressure the closest cipher. This will slow down decoding and also can possibly prevent a rescue if you hit the survivor with enough moisture that when they get to the chair they get some damage and then you can hit them with a normal attack. Another strategy that you can employ, you can try and hit them with some moisture damage by using the dash and then when they come in you can throw the harpoon and call it back to be able to deal some instant damage to them or you can wait until they've rescued and you can inflict some moisture to both of the survivors the rescued and the rescuer this can help you maybe even deal some damage if you've left some other giant abyss areas around the area so that they will take some damage passively without you even chasing them to use your dash more effectively, you shouldn't really use it to try and hit survivors that are very far away from you because in most cases they will see you coming and they can quickly, easily sidestep. When you've got a rescuer coming in for example, or you're chasing a survivor and you want to hit them with the dash, it's very good to make sure that there is a wall right behind them or right next to them so when you dash you'll quickly hit the wall and your animation will stop. This will mean that you're closer to the survivor and not the opposite side of the map, which happens a lot when you start playing Nyad for the first time. You can also do this strategy when the rescuer is coming into the chair. You can aim towards the chair so that you will hit the chair even if you miss the survivor who's rescuing. This means that you can possibly hit the rescuer with some moisture damage and you are right next to them ready to hit them as soon as your animation is finished. You should also use your dash as a great way of mobility, especially if you want to get to a cipher because you know it's being decoded. You should throw your harpoon towards the cipher that you want to head towards. This will give you more torrent form time and also more dashes before your harpoon is recalled. A neat little interaction you can use with Naya's dash is that you can interrupt survivor's interaction abilities. For example, if a survivor like Priestess is trying to make a portal, you can quickly dash into her and it will cancel that ability. Or, for example, if a survivor is rescuing, you can hit them with some moisture and it will stop the rescue animation and they have to retry again. This can be useful in some situations, but in general, you really should be using your weapon to hit them. But if you know that they're close to taking some damage from the water, this can be very useful. Have you played Nyad? And are there any secret tips that you know that I should know about or people in the comments should know about? Well, please tell me down in the comments below. And if you found this video interesting, please give this video a like and subscribe if you'd like to learn some tips, some tricks, and maybe some secret information about Identity 5 that you didn't know. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.